Toyota's body on frame vehicles, the Tundra, the Sequoia, the Forerunner, and the Tacoma have all been kind of overdue for some updates for quite some time now. And the Sequoia in particular has been a particularly egregious example. The second generation Sequoia went for quite some time with just a couple of facelifts, and it was really, really ready for an update. And now it is here. This is the 2023 Toyota Sequoia. My name is Jake, and this is Out Motorsports, the channel for cars as you are. Let's get all into what this 2023 Toyota Sequoia is, talk about what it's powered by, but in particular today we're going to be talking about how it tows because a lot of people aren't going to test these vehicles with a big trailer behind them, but I am. I have a 7,000 pound enclosed trailer with a BMW race car in it, and we are going to go to Virginia International Raceway to kick off my National Autosport Association racing season. So with that, let's get into it. So what is the 2023 Toyota Sequoia? Well, you can see it's a large SUV. It is a three row, seven passenger SUV in this case, right? Two, four, seven, yeah. Three across the very third row. And this is on a platform shared with the Toyota Tundra pickup truck and the Lexus LX600. Now, in this case, every Toyota Sequoia is going to be powered by the same iForce Max drivetrain, which is offered in the Tundra, but in the Tundra, you can also have an iForce powertrain without the Max. So the iForce Max powertrain is going to be a 3.5 liter twin turbo V6 gas engine that runs on 87 octane regular fuel, paired to a hybrid system with an electric motor in the bell housing between the engine and the transmission. That is a very similar setup to the Ford F-150 Power Boost Hybrid. It's the same sort of concept where the electric motor is put in the bell housing so it can take advantage of all 10 gears of the 10-speed automatic transmission. All of that iForce and Max combined to produce 437 horsepower and 583 pound-feet of torque. That is an insane amount of torque for ostensibly a family SUV, but here, in this case, Toyota has it. Now, this truck in particular is the Sequoia Platinum, you can see right here. So this is fully loaded. It is a street-focused truck. It's not one of the TRD-oriented vehicles in the Sequoia lineup like that TRD Pro might be which does affect the suspension setup and some of the other characteristics of the vehicle, like the tires that they give it. So in this case, this one being the Platinum, this is gonna be almost the top trim that is street focused. There is that Sequoia capstone, which does come with some bigger wheels and some different leather and some little tweaks, but this one is basically the nicest one you're gonna get. You get 20 inch wheels here with some Yokohama Geolander highway tires. These are an all season tire. And then going between these wheels and tires and the rest of the vehicle, you get an adaptive variable suspension, which is to say adaptive shocks. So those can get stiffer or softer based on your drive mode based on the drive conditions and that is also paired only on the rear axle with a load leveling airbag rear suspension so you can raise the vehicle up and down if you need to for you know getting things in and out of the hatch or whatever and it will also load level when you've got a lot of weight in the back now that is all important because we have to talk about towing and payload so come on with me to the back of this thing and we'll talk about all that so we're going to start off talking about towing by me holding a piece of the bumper cover, and that is because Toyota, like a lot of other manufacturers building these full-size body-on-frame SUVs, is hiding the trailer hitch receiver behind part of the bumper cover. Obviously, they think most people aren't towing all the time, and even if you are towing, it's not going to be something you do daily, so why have that hitch exposed? Instead, you can cover up behind some pretty plastic. So this bumper cover is actually really nice and easy to remove, unlike some others that I've worked with in the past, including those of older Toyota and Lexus products. So in this case, it's all just clips that hold this thing in, and all you have to do is grab at the bottom, pull, and the whole thing comes off. So this is really nice because it removes very, very easily. Now, as far as what's going on with towing on the Sequoia, this is going to be one of the higher rated trim levels that you can get as far as the capacity for towing. Toyota rates the Sequoia Platinum at 9,010 pounds of trailer capacity with a 10% tongue weight, so 901 pounds. Yeah, 901 pounds. So that is uh, pretty good for something this size. The wheelbase is not super long. It's about 122, 123 inches, which is competitive with things like the Chevy Tahoe and the Ford Expedition, but it's not gonna be as long as a full-size pickup truck like that Toyota Tundra. Now, opening up this driver's door, you always just wanna look at the door jam sticker that's located right here. That will tell you the combined weight of cargo and occupants should never exceed a certain weight limit. And in this case, we have it listed at 
1,290 pounds, which is not 1,410 pounds. So this is why it's important to always check the exact vehicle you're buying because this particular Sequoia Platinum may have some options on it that some of the other Sequoia Platinums don't, and that will impact your payload. And that is important because when you're towing and you've got that tongue weight, i.e. up to about 900 pounds, you have to subtract the 900 pounds from the 1290 pounds of total payload. And that means that's how much weight you can have inside the vehicle for things like you, your bag full of stuff for a track weekend at VIR or wherever else you're going, and maybe some friends or your family. So important to think about, generally a lower trim of vehicle will have more payload available than a higher trim just because you've got less stuff going on. You might not have powered seats, you might not have a panoramic sunroof, something like that. So that is why you want to consider your payload. And so on the topic of bringing your bags with you to a race weekend, we're going to go with that as the theme for why I'm back here showing you this because this is what I had to do this weekend and this is something that kind of bothered me about the back of this 2023 Sequoia. So if we pop the power rear tailgate, I want to show you the third row seating situation because this is different than other vehicles in this segment, namely the Chevy Tahoe and the Ford Expedition. So as you can see, I've got the third row seat raised or part of it, and then I've got some cargo area behind me. That's pretty normal. Well, this is of course not very deep as a lot of these shorter full-size SUVs go. Uh, you don't have a ton of cargo space with the third row up. No big deal. I'm going to fold the third row. So it's power operated. I'm going to let the seat go down. And then I'm going to show you the issue with the third row seat in here, and that is the fact that as this folds down, that little beat means it's done. This is all you've got. It doesn't go into the floor, which means you've got all this space down here. I'm going to take out what Toyota gives you as the solution to this. This is a fake floor that they give you. But this is what you got going on here. And the reason that you have this as your, your situation is because these are all hybrids, like I mentioned, and they had to put the batteries somewhere. And it's not the world's biggest battery pack, but they elected to put it right underneath the third row seat. So that means you've got this extra height here and the floor of the vehicle's down here. So Toyota chose to give you this guy as a fake floor. So you can install it down here and have it be kind of level with the base of the seats if that's helpful to you. Or you can move it up a level to here and then they give you these fold out flaps that make this flat enough. But the issue is you're losing, what is this, almost a foot of space of, of height right here. And if you're trying to move a big box of some sort, whether it's furniture or if you're helping someone move or, you know, whatever, this is just not a great use of space in a vehicle that's a large box meant to move large things. So kind of a packaging decision that was made. I don't know if I quite understand the why behind it, but I'm sure they decided the trade-off was worth it in the end. So all that to say, when I had my track bag and all my things at the racetrack, uh, I had to have this setup going on because otherwise nothing would fit back here. <laughs> so uh, this is what you've got. The third row can indeed slide if you want it to slide. So I'll show you with the floor out just because it's easier to see. But you can grab these handles and you can slide this forward quite a bit to get another, I don't know, seven or eight inches of depth here with that fake floor and it'll all be flat up to the seat. But that is all you've got for the third row. The second row seats do fold down to be level with these guys, but they again do not slide. They don't come out. They don't tip forward. So realistically, you've just got a lot less height in the vehicle to work with than the proportions and the body styling might imply. And so with all that, let's get behind the wheel of this 2023 Toyota Sequoia and talk all about how it is to tow with. Loud. I don't know why the V6 needs to be this loud, but uh, let's talk about towing with the 2023 Toyota Sequoia. So beyond the loudness of the V6, the iForce Max, uh, I really like the drivetrain. It is a good drivetrain. I enjoyed it enough in the Tundra last year with just the twin turbos, but with the hybrid, it really is nice. You get a little extra scoot, a little extra push. It just is some extra torque that comes in, basically to fill in the gaps where you might have turbo lag. It's interesting because in the gauge cluster, there's this towing view that shows the iForce gauge and then the Max gauge, and those are just the 
turbo boost and PSI and the electric assist, but uh, it's nice to see kind of what's doing what in any given moment. You cannot drive this on just the battery power with a trailer hooked up. It's very similar. The whole system is similar in concept to the Ford Power Boost Hybrid in the F-150, and they both behave the same in that the electric motors don't make enough power and torque to move this whole rig with a trailer hooked up so they're not gonna let it do it. They're gonna protect the motor, but uh, it helps either way. It's really nice, plenty of power and torque. You will never feel like you're lacking for either. That's really, really great. As far as steering is concerned, totally fine. Braking, totally fine. The pedal feels great. Uh, nice initial bite, not too, too much, not too little. And then the built-in trailer brake controller, uh, you control it down by your knee, set all the, the gain and everything, and it ties in so nicely with the Sequoia's braking system. It's a really easy, predictable braking experience that I, I am very much here for. Um, really, really nice. The handling and body control, especially when you get up to 60, 65 miles an hour with a trailer like this, are lacking. It's a little too soft for me, and it's worth admitting I've been towing on a very windy day, so that does not help anything. At highway speeds, you know, 60, 65, I was making a lot of small corrective inputs just to keep things going perfectly straight here and there, and that's not something that I really ever want to have to do. It's a mix of the wheelbase, it's a mix of the soft suspension, even in tow plus mode, and then, you know, the fact that it's windy and I've got this whole barn behind me that catches the wind and wants to blow everything around. Toyota could absolutely stiffen up the shocks in tow plus mode with a software update. Uh, that would be a really, really nice thing that I think would go a long way. They've just got the whole thing tuned for, you know, more comfort than anything, both on the road and if you're going to be off-roading it. So just something to think about. The other thing worth mentioning on that note, this being a Platinum, this is very street focused. And if you were to buy a Sequoia TRD Pro or TRD off-road, whatever other trims that are TRDs, those are gonna come with all-terrain tires with big, chunky tread blocks on the tires, and their suspensions are gonna be tuned softer than this one. So if you want one of those, you need to be really sure because they're gonna be softer than this, and I have a feeling that the towing experience will suffer compared to this one. And this one, depending on the day and depending on what you're pulling and your, and your whole setup, is only fine in some cases. So just something to think about. Now. Visibility is generally good. The dash, I think, is a little high, much like the Tundra. The mirrors on this one are the optional tow mirrors that are huge. They're like Dumbo elephant ears, but uh, they do work really well. They are power extending tow mirrors, so uh, you can get extra view down the side of your trailer. They've got the uh, convex portion at the bottom of them like a bunch of other truck tow mirrors do. You do have to adjust that part manually, like most of them. I think Ram probably holds the patent on power adjustable at the bottom, because the only thing I've driven that'll do it is a Ram 2500, but uh, the mirrors are very, very good. You do have trailer blind spot monitoring, finally, thank you Toyota, and it automatically detects the length of your trailer, so that is really nice as well, because uh, you don't have to tell it much when you plug the trailer in for the first time, just how many axles does it have and how much does it weigh. That is really, really slick. As far as other driver safety stuff going on, uh, you've got your typical Toyota Safety Sense, which gives you a mix of lane centering, lane keep, radar cruise control, rear cross traffic alert, all that good stuff. Obviously, some of those systems disable for obvious reasons. When you have the trailer hooked up, you're not gonna have rear cross traffic alert uh, with a trailer hooked up. There's nothing to alert you there. But the one thing that I wish you could do that you can't is have lane centering with a trailer. It will not let you do it. It will do lane keep. So if you start going out of your lane, it will try to correct the steering just a touch, but it won't center. And the lane keep I find more obtrusive than not. And that's not a Toyota thing. It's just any of these while towing. It, it provides too many inputs that I don't want to provide. Others have figured out how to do it with a trailer. So it's a little bit of a bummer that Toyota hasn't, but either way, uh, I would rather be paying attention to all this myself or have a full on, you know, hands off experience like GM Super Cruise, the stuff in between is really not super well refined to be totally safe in my opinion. Now, as far as other things going on, I have spent 277.4 miles in the Sequoia towing so far. Um, it's a comfortable place to sit. This is a good vehicle for tall people. Again, finally, I, I just came out of a Tacoma a few weeks ago that was the opposite of good for tall people. This is great. I have plenty of leg room, plenty of headroom. I fit in here overall. The steering wheel is tilt and telescope, so I can have everything back really far from my legs and still reach the steering wheel safely. And then, you know, the cockpit in general, I think is 
pretty well designed. The screen here is huge. I'd be okay with a slightly smaller one, but they use the space well at least. The new uh, infotainment software is pretty easy to navigate. And then of course you've got wireless and wired CarPlay and Android Auto, which is also pretty good. Now, as I go down this hill and I get on the brakes, the truck does downshift for me a little bit. It's not super aggressive as far as giving you that engine braking uh, while you're on the brake pedal to help with slowing the vehicle. I still think Ford does it the best out of everyone in the segment in their tow haul mode. It is the most aggressive engine braking. It is super helpful on long downhill grades. I do wish Toyota would do a little bit more, but they are at least doing something there. So that is helpful. Uh, back to the cabin for a second. Um, like I said, everything is pretty easy to deal with. The sound system is on the good end of average. It's, I think, very good for the segment for what it is. This is a JBL system. Um, is it knock your socks off Mark Levinson like you'd get in a Lexus? No. Does it need to be? No. Uh, it, is, it is totally fine. Again, accelerating away from the stop sign. You know, this is working and I've got my foot in it pretty good, but it's all easy. This is, this is just such a leap forward from what the old Sequoia was. If you're a Toyota diehard, this is a huge improvement. And even if you're not, and you're just looking for something that fits this segment, you know, the Tahoe, the Expedition, this, the Nissan Armada, this is certainly worth your look. It is certainly worth a drive. For the sake of towing, I think you really need to consider the trim level you pick, what you're towing, and what your setup is gonna be, because that will really impact how the experience goes for you. The bones of this are generally pretty good. Uh, I think with anything that's half of the rated weight or higher, you need to have weight distribution and sway control on it. Otherwise, it's just too soft. But otherwise, there's a lot to like here. This is such a market improvement over the old Sequoia, which granted was ancient, but either way, this is a, a generally well done effort from Toyota. And I think I like this more than the Tundra, which is you know on the same platform. Uh, I think the hybrid goes a little bit further in how it delivers power, and I like it more as a result. Stability-wise, the Tundra was better, of course, longer wheelbase, but uh, I, I think this feels more cohesive to me than the Tundra just for that reason. So if you're, if you're shopping this or a Tundra, I would really recommend the Tundra as a hybrid, which you can do across many, if not all, of the trim levels. All right, and that is it for this towing review of the 2023 Toyota Sequoia Platinum. Thank you, as always, for coming along. Please be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe right here on YouTube. Give us a follow on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, at OutMotorsports, if you'd like to follow along elsewhere with all of our shenanigans. And if you'd like to join a growing community of LGBT automotive enthusiasts and motorsports competitors, head over to outmotorsports.com. We've got a whole group over there. We'd love to meet you online, see you at some events in person that we're hosting throughout this year. We have a whole bunch of people that would be so excited to be your new best friends. Till next time, please stay safe, be well, and we'll see you again soon.